Hi, this is La Biblia DC, and today we'll be discussing the coronavirus fear mongering and what it actually means. So, I have a sore throat for some reason, but I don't believe it's the coronavirus, right? So, I'm just going to say it's not a big deal because I'm going to get into that in a second. But uh, let's see here. Okay, science. So, according to this David Hodges guy, I guess he's one of Alex Jones' friends. I don't know. It seems like an Alex Jones type thing. I just found this website. It says, signs are appearing that the coronavirus outbreak will be followed by a Chai led Red Dawn invasion. So this person's claiming that uh, you know, the Chinese are going to invade the U.S. through Mexico. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, we're considering closing the border. Um, Chinese and possibly Russians in their central um, produce American food and other attacks. According to this guy, they said the Chinese release the coronavirus to weaken America and Taiwan and stuff. They're going to invade uh, the U.S. and stuff. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't buy that for a second because coronavirus only has a 2% kill rate. So that means the only 2% of people infected die. So that's very low. This is not a bioweapon whatsoever. Okay, so since the tunnels under the wall border are the primary concern, they're saying that overwhelming evidence of the coming Chinese invasion, inclusion in the short term, it says stay away from public gatherings, wear a mask and gloves, as people are saying to do, all the Chinese are going to invade us, uh, but it's coronavirus, does it mean anything? No. Okay. Let me show you something. Coronavirus, COVID-19, mortality rate, 3.4% mortality rate estimated by WHO as of March 3rd. Globally, about 3.4% of COVID-19 cases have died. By comparison, the seasonal flu kills far fewer than less than 1% infected. The initial estimate was 2%, but once again, it's still very, very, very low. Okay, uh, As you can see here, uh, Mortality rate in Wuhan was still 4.9% low, 3.1, 2.1. Other provinces were 0.16%, were 313, accounting for 74% of China's total. So most of the cases were still mild, therefore there was no need to panic. Um, so once again, uh, only 3% of mortality rate. Um, Comparisons with other viruses, so you can see MERS down here, which is nobody made a big deal when this came out a couple years ago. Had a 34% kill rate, but nobody made a big deal. So, what I'm saying is this don't panic about it, all right? So, you know, people say, oh, well, the coronavirus is going to get me, okay? You know, it doesn't really make any sense. I'll, I'll tell you something right now. Do you believe the common cold is going to kill you? Because that's what the coronavirus is. All right? You don't believe me? Let me show you something. So, uh, sorry about that. Here's WebMD. So this is the current article from uh, 3-7-2020. What is causing my cold? I know you're going to say here, well, the coronavirus is in the news. Rhinovirus, coronavirus, RSV, and para-influenza. There are also a lot of viruses that doctors haven't identified. About 20 to 30 percent of colds in adults are caused by these unknown bugs. So not only do we have the coronavirus going around, we also have these unknown bugs. Oh my goodness, the world's going to end. We got to shut down the schools. We got to shut down the bridges. We gotta you know, it's just a joke. All right. Look at this. 20 to 30 percent of viruses are unknown. Okay. Uh, so let, let me read on. Okay. So what is causing it? Now you're saying. Oh, well, this is new. It might be just saying, oh, well, you know, the coronavirus is causing COVID. It's 2020. So let's go back in time here. Right now, I'm going to take this link, and I'm going to go on the way back to machine line. You can see here, I am not, this is not edited. This is not, um, uh, what's it, Photoshop or anything like that. It is live. So we're going to click Browse History. It's going to go, it's going to browse. Okay, and we're going to go back to 2017 real quick saying well why 2017 because you know it's, it's two years ago no three years ago about so we'll go two years ago no it's march so we'll go to february 10th that's the last snapshot click this for this to load
Okay, so here is 2017, the same website from 2017. What do you see here? The coronavirus down here. Once again, it says about 20 to 30 percent of colds are actually caused by unknown bugs. This was in 2017. Okay, you don't need any more evidence than this, right? But for those people that are fear buying and fear mongering and stuff like that, let's go back further than this. As you know, it's 2020, so we're going to go back to 2010, 10 years ago. I was in high school during this time, believe it or not. I was a senior. So, February 5th, 2010. So let's click that. Uh, let's see here. Wait for this to show up. Wow. Okay, here we go. So 2010, all right? I don't know why it's saying March 7th, 2020. I'm sorry about this, but we're on February 7th. 5th, 2010 here. Um, so, oh, here. Review by Jonathan N. Gern, whoever that is, on September 25th, 2009. So you can see I'm not making this up. So it says here, uh, other causes of the common cold. Let's see here. Causes of the common cold. The coronavirus and the RSV are responsible for 20% and 10% of cases, respectively. This was in 2010. Once again, February 5th, 2010. You can see here. So that was 10 years ago. A little over 10 years ago when I was in high school still. They're over there saying that the coronavirus was going around back then. You don't need to see people buying water and buying storable food and having a panic attack over this. But let's go back further here for a second. It's February 24. February 24, 2007. I was in high school at this time and I was I think it was uh, let's see, I think it was 16 or no 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 I was 15 years old okay so February 24 27 uh, 2007 when I was 15 years old this is the furthest I can go back but as you can see here this is WebMD from 2007 or 13 years ago and you can see here once again the coronavirus is uh, let's see here Scientists think coronaviruses cause a large percentage of all adult colds. They bring on colds primarily in the winter and early spring. Of more than 30 kinds, three are or four infect humans. The importance of coronaviruses as a cause of colds is hard to assess because unlike rhinoviruses, they are difficult to grow in the laboratory. They are difficult, see this, for all these people that are saying it's a bioweapon here, okay? They are difficult to grow in the laboratory. Let's repeat that again. They are difficult to grow in the laboratory. Okay? I'm going to repeat it again. Because these people that go around and they say, oh, the Chinese released this so they can invade the United States and all this stuff, and it's a bioweapon. They are difficult to grow in the laboratory. Let's read that again here. From 2007, they're mentioning the coronaviruses, and they're saying that it causes 30% of colds. And they are difficult to gr to grow in the laboratory. Approximately 10 to 15 percent of adult colds are caused by viruses responsible for more severe illnesses. And then they're saying that these viruses here are more severe than the coronavirus. Look at this. 2007. There is no evidence you can get cold from exposure to cold weather. Okay. There are more than 200 different viruses known to cause the symptoms of the common cold. Okay, so there you go. There you go. D do I need to go into anything else? Okay, so this was 2007, 13 years ago. And I was 15 years old, all right? They were saying that it's difficult to grow in the laboratory. They said that it caused the common cold. So why is people making a big deal about it, all right? Let's, let, me, let me go to another source for you, all right? This is Lysol. This is Lysol's website from 2007. What do you see here? Okay. Avian flu. Avian flu. Bird flu. Avian flu. Avian flu. Here's expert resources on the avian flu. Here's what you need to know about the avian flu. And we're still here today talking to you sure if the internet and social media was around back then, they would be making a 
big, 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 big deal today. Okay? 2007, they will be, will be doing the same thing they're doing today. Okay? So, like I said before, you can see here, bird flu, avian flu, whatever. Okay? And we're still here today. All right? And this is when I was in high school. All right? And like I said, we're still here today. I'm still walking around. We survived the bird flu. We survi I survived the Zika. I survived the, uh, uh, the swine flu. I survived the, uh, the uh, what was the other one? Swine flu, uh, Zika, uh, the regular flu, the uh, Ebola outbreak. I survived all that, and I'm still here. So, oh yeah, and the SARS outbreak, that was even before this. So this was 2003 when I was in elementary school, all right? That's when that was going on. So, you know, I survived all that West Nile, Lyme disease. I survived all that. And I'm still here talking to you. I'm just telling you, don't make a big deal about it. All right? Don't make the big deal about this. All right? It's just, just, it's just a joke. All right? It is truly a joke on you. As you can see here, this is back in 2007. They were making a big deal about the game. All right? And not only that, I just showed you that coronavirus is difficult to grow in the laboratory. So why are people saying it's a bioweapon? I have no clue. I guess they don't, don't read or they're just trying to sell you storable food. Or stu and stuff like that. There's, and, and look at this. This is this is this this is the icing on the cake. Okay. This peddler here, Queen's peddler, wiped clean of sanitizing products amid coronavirus scare, March 4, 2020. So what's going on? He's selling boxes of 50 masks for $70 each. People will buy it. People are buying it because you know what? Fear is the best thing to bypass the logical part of your brain. It's not lighter flights. People aren't thinking when they spend that $70. So you get person in fear, you get them to do anything you want. You buy whatever you want. All right? So you can see here, um, you sell a mask. Look at this. Uh, let me show you something else here. Look at this. Look at this, people. Liquid Gold Purell selling for $79 in the Manhattan hardware store. This is well. This is how New Yorkers do everything. Everything's more expensive there, including Purell. And, but guess what? People were buying it, all right? So you're a fool if you're doing this. That seventy dollars could be better spent elsewhere. Why are you going to spend it on soap? Why are you going to do this? This this is ridiculous, all right? Um, so you know, seventy nine dollars. This bottle of Purell was selling for a hundred nine. Okay, so you can see here that they're selling it, and the, I think it's the story said uh, that they were uh, selling out of these. So, you know, if you want to go and you want to believe the, the, the fear and the fear mongering, you're going to spend a lot of money. And you're going to survive it. Because, you know, like I said before, it's hard to grow in a laboratory. It's If it's hard to grow in a laboratory, it's hard to grow in your body. And like I said before, it's just a hoax. Do I need to say any more? Do I need to say any more? I'm sure there's going to be naysayers in the comments section saying that, they're just fear mongering. They're going to be right when everybody gets sick and everybody starts doing this and that. I'm telling you, it's not a big deal. Don't make a big deal about it. All right. Health Canada says the best way to avoid the flu is vaccination, which in many provinces is free. Well, let's see if these recent flu shot recipients can help reveal the mystery of why Cheetos and Pop-Tarts list their ingredients while vaccines do their best not to. Are you aware of the ingredients in the vaccine? Uh, I know there's some egg products. I don't think they offered us a list of ingredients, though. That, no, I don't know. This is blind faith for me. Did you know that there's uh, mercury in that shot? No, I didn't. Oh, I did not, no. Are you glad that it's free? Yes. But you know it's not really free. Yes. Well, it's paying for, through our taxes, right? So, If I sneeze right now, would you be okay with that? No. 
these people confirm two things. Some are happy to wait in line for a secret serum, and nobody likes getting sneezed on. <laughs> but what if drug companies are right? What if tricking your body into thinking it's already sick doesn't make you sick? What if there's not enough vaccine to go around? You should know that making your own is easier than brewing your own beer. <laughs> and it could save your life. Well, the first thing you need is a live virus. Now, is there anyone here suffering from the flu? Sir, would you favor us by discharging directly onto these chicken embryos? Uh, I, I think I could do the help. <laughs> okay. We now have our chicken embryos and our live virus. Now, from the pickled frog jar at your local school's biology class, we'll keep that virus dead like the drug companies do with formaldehyde. Now, careful, don't get any frog in the mix. That'd be gross. Now, uh, let's add a little ether. <sighs> careful, don't fall asleep. And then we dump some detergent in there. That keeps it clean. And remember when your mother lost her mind when you played with mercury because it never leaves your body? Well, that makes it a great preservative. If you have a thermometer... Well, staying healthy is a lot more important than room temperature. Now, all of this goes into the centrifuge, like this blender, and... Hey, hey, hey! It's vaccine for the whole family. Well, the debate over whether vaccines usually don't work or aren't fully safe may never end. Which at least explains why the contents are rarely publicized. Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> But it's government recommended. <laughs> oh well, that's my eye on the flu shot. Now let's cross stateside, and the U.S. has started to test a swine flu vaccine on children and adults. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services hopes to vaccinate at least 160 million people by December. Well, for more on this, let's cross to our correspondent Priya Strida, who's in our Washington studio for us. Hello to you, Priya. So what are the hopes for this new vaccine? Thanks. Well, the swine flu vaccine has raised concerns with people across the world. A new survey shows that one third of British nurses have said that they will not take the swine flu vaccine because they're worried about the possible side effects. Now, the swine flu vaccine from back in the 1970s, which is supposed to be pretty similar to the one that's being offered today, has been linked to a neurological disorder called the Guillain-Barre syndrome. And joining me to discuss all of this is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Wayne, thanks so much for joining me. First of all, can you tell me who has taken the swine flu vaccine so far and what have you heard about it well apparently there has been a test uh, community used already uh, uh, there, there, we're also hearing that the vaccine that's being developed uh, they're saying it's not for everyone uh, apparently children were used as uh, for lack of a better term uh, guinea pigs in Oklahoma I, I know from talking to people in the research community even scientists who helped uh, develop the vaccine for smallpox are saying they're not going to take the vaccine and urging their friends and family not to take this vaccine either. And what kind of side effects did these children have, if any? Well, contained in the vaccine is a, a, a component called thimerosal, which has been proven, uh, it, it, half of it is composed of mercury, and it's been proven to cause not only Guillain-Barre syndrome, but also autism in young children. There's been several court cases uh, because of past uh, vaccinations due to the autism issue. And so how will the swine flu vaccine be offered? Will it be mandatory for people? What have you heard about that? Well, there was a conference here in Washington last week where we have two two themes present. We have the research community, the medical community, um, uh, saying, look, uh, what we need to provide uh, the public is uh, uh, good information. And let them make the decision based on facts. We have the emergency community, the Homeland Security, Federal Emergency Management Agency people talking about forced vaccinations, forced quarantines, uh, basically uh, the politicians uh, uh, running the show instead of the people who are the, from the medical community and know much better about the, the threat of this particular influenza. And so how effective would a vaccine be if the majority of people decide not to take it? 
Well, but for those who take it, of course, they, you know, they can uh, limit their exposure to others. But uh, uh, what we're what we're basically hearing is there's a uh, anti-vaccine movement now starting across America. As one person said from the public health community, said these people are revving up, almost like this is the enemy, and and not, pe you know, uh, they're, they're going to invoke all these various protocols uh, for uh, emergency situations, uh, treating these people who don't want to take the vaccine forcing children as a, uh, a, a predicate to enroll in school, for example, uh, to take the vaccine is going to cause quite a few problems here amongst the public in the United States. And how much testing was actually done on this vaccine? How come we weren't able to find one that would, you know, not have all these side effects? Well, the, to the testing, uh, we're hearing, uh, of course, uh, there may, may be a recommendation for uh, three vaccinations, two for the swine flu, one for the regular seasonal flu. But uh, we all know about the side effects from 1975 and 76, and therefore um, this vaccine, even amongst people who work in the medical community, is not considered safe. And when are these decisions likely to happen? When will they decide if this will be mandatory or not? We're, we're hearing that this second wave of the flu for the northern hemisphere uh, will strike uh, sometime at the end of September um, and, and reach peak in October, possibly. This is actually uh, what happened with the 1918 flu. It uh, first cases uh, in September peaked in October, ebbed off in November. So we'll probably see this vaccination uh, program come into full effect uh, uh, next month. Well, as we get closer to the deadline that they're supposed to be offering these swine flu vaccines, we'll be sure to keep you updated on anything we hear about it. But for now, back to you in Moscow. All right, Priya, many thanks to you and your guests for that. Priya Srida in our Washington studio for us. Earlier this year, you told us you had ordered your administration to cease and desist on payments to journalists uh, to promote your agenda. You cited the need for uh, ethical concerns and the need for a bright line between the press and the government. Your administration continues to make the use of video news releases, which are prepackaged news stories sent to television stations, fully aware that some or many of these stations will air them without any disclaimer that they are produced by the government. Controller General of the United States this week said that raises ethical questions. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? Uh, there, there is a Justice Department opinion that says these um, pieces are within the law so long as they're based upon facts, not advocacy. And I expect our agencies to adhere to that ruling, to that Justice Department opinion. It's been a long-standing practice of the federal government to use uh, these uh, types of videos. The agricultural Department, as I understand it, has been using these videos for a long period of time. The Defense Department, other departments have been doing so. It's important that, the, that they be based upon the guidelines set out by the Justice Department. Now, I also I think it would be helpful if local stations then disclose to their viewers if that's you know that this was based upon a factual report and they chose to use it but evidently in some cases that's not the case so anyway to guarantee that's happening by including that language in the prepackaged report yeah i don't you know look, I mean, oh you mean a disclosure I'm george w bush and i well some way to make sure it couldn't air without the disclosure that you believe is so vital uh you know ken i mean there's a there's a procedure that we're going to follow, and the local stations ought to, if there's a deep concern about that, ought to tell their viewers what they're watching. The fake coronavirus pandemic now being promoted around the world is aimed at creating a world republic, P3 Freemason sources say. The coronavirus fear is also being used by the U.S. corporation as an excuse for their February 16th default. 
Just like the proverbial schoolboy who said, the dog ate my homework. These people are saying, the virus ate my financial system. That is more face saving than saying, I got cut off because I haven't been paying my bills for 40 years. In any case, what this means is they have lost the ability to create central bank funny money to prop up markets and keep themselves in power. The owners of the US corporation have been using a coincidental mention of a deadly virus in a 1980s book to propagate the message they have planned these events years ago. They used this to tell the Asians to roll over our bonds or face the music. The propaganda rag Popular Mechanics of 9.11 BS Infamy has contributed to their fear-mongering with the following headline. Welp, scientists found 28 new virus groups in a melting glacier. This is how the world ends. The answer given was, we will face the music. Asian secret society sources say. When the current battle of humanity versus the virus ends, a new battle will begin for sure, they acknowledge, indicating they are in for the long haul. The good guys in the West, for their part, know the Chinese characters for crisis Wei Ji mean danger and opportunity and are using this default to try and usher in a more benevolent system for taking care of the planet Earth. To this end the White Dragon Society has proposed the activation of a Project Blue Beam type event to the Anglo-Saxon Five Eyes Alliance, WDS sources say. Project Blue Beam is a fake end-time scenario using holograms, computer graphics, and real military displays, they say. The idea would be to stage what is known as a liminal event, something like a wedding or a coming-of-age planetary ceremony, the sources explain. The proposal has not been finalized at this point, they add. While attempts have been made to debunk Project Blue Beam, there can be no doubt it's technically possible. The ability to project giant holograms in the sky was proven in combat during the Second Iraq War. Also, the use of computer graphics on TV news could now easily create a WWIII type scenario. By adding military forces in action, it would be easy to convince the sleepwalking majority that the event was real. Insiders like the readers of this newsletter could just relax and enjoy the show. In any case, there can be no doubt that the ongoing coronavirus panic is designed to pave the way for emergency military rule and the start of a world republic. What people need to keep in mind though, is that it's all fake. Here, for example, is a frontline report from Italy on the pandemic. Italian Governor Zea from the Veneto region said. 80% of all sick people heal by themselves, 15% need medication and 5% need to have hospital attention. All 17 people who died already, had advanced health issues. No healthy person who caught the coronavirus has died. It's an alarm with no foundation. In the beginning they reacted the way they did because they didn't have any real information about the virus. But after seeing what it is, the information is too exaggerated. Before we describe more fakery though, we need to also point out some very serious special forces battles that are unfolding in several key locations around the world. The most important action is now taking place. People will get it, people will go through a process called sneezing, coughing, fever, everything else, they will recover from it at least 97 to 99 percent of the time. Um, the death rates outside of, of China are about 0.8 percent. Okay, the death rates inside China are around 2 percent. So look at it, 98 to 99 percent of the people um, live. Now this article came out in the end of January from The Lancet and they still say that this, like all other viruses, are going to peak around April and then the cases will fall. Is Wall Street behind this, um, th th this coronavirus hype? Now, you would think that it'd be a pandemic, but currently, today, it is not a pandemic. Why? World Bank announced the creation of a specialized bonds that would be used to fund the previously funded Pandemic Emergency Financing Facility in the event of an officially recognized uh, World Health Organization pandemic, essentially sold under the premise that those who invested in the bonds would lose their money if any of six deadly pandemics hit, including the coronavirus. Now, the critics said that this, um, however, they have called the unnecessarily convoluted World Bank enabled looting that enriches intermediaries and investors instead of the funds uh, in, for the intended targets. This case, um, low-income countries struggling to fight a pandemic. Now, the bonds have to mature by July 15, 2020. 
So the World Health Organization has to keep it quiet where they're not going to be calling it a pandemic. So let's look at this. UN declines to label the COVID-19 as a pandemic. Why? Now, now, think of this in retrospect at how many people are, or what do you see on the news all the time? Are people walking around masks? Events are being canceled. Countries are being closed. I mean, it, it looks like Israel and Italy are closing their borders. What does the World Health Organization have to say? The World Health Organization so, so far has resisted describing the crisis as such as saying the, the, the word pandemic might spook the world and further lead some countries to lose hope of containing the virus. Really? Okay, yeah, I'm going to believe that one.